go. Welcome to our first virtual Sunday School. <clears throat> Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas break and enjoyed the beautiful snow this weekend. On Friday, some of you had a snow day, which was wonderful. Well, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to meet this way, so you can have Sunday School whenever you want. If you remember the last time we were together, we talked about the Christmas story. We even got to act it out. We got to be angels, shepherds, Mary, Joseph, and more angels. It's a lot of angels in the Christmas story. More angels today. But if you look at your nativity, maybe you have a nativity set up at home, you'll notice there are some people at the nativity we never talked about. We didn't act them out. We never even mentioned them. There were th probably three other people in your nativity scene, and that's what we're going to talk about today. They actually have their own special holiday called Epiphany. They are the three wise men. Some Bibles call them three kings, some Bibles or stories or songs call them the Magi, but they were wise men. They probably worked for a king, we think maybe in the country of Persia, and they their job was to look and study the stars. Not like astronomers today. They didn't have telescopes. They didn't have binoculars to check out the stars. They only had their eyes. And then they would make charts. And they noticed there was a very unusual star. They checked their papers and they knew it was the star that brought the birth of a king. Well, of course, they wanted to go check it out. So they packed up. Think about when you go on a trip. They packed up, not a suitcase like you do, and they didn't throw it in their trunk like you do, and they didn't get in a car and put on their seat belt and put in their earphones and maybe watch a video. Remember, we've talked about how they traveled in Bible times. Very different. They probably had camels that they would load up with all their belongings. They would probably have money because they did work for the king, so they would travel in style, but in style for those days. The terrain they traveled on, very sandy, more like a desert. No hotels, no fast food. They took everything with them. They probably slept outside some nights. And since they were following a star, they may have slept during the daytime and traveled at night. As they traveled along, I wonder, the Bible doesn't tell us everything. It doesn't give us all the details, but we can use our imagination. Maybe after a few days, some of them got tired. Some of them maybe thought, what are we doing? I want to go back home. But they kept going. No GPS. No maps, but just the star to follow. And they followed that star, and the story is in the book of Matthew in our Bible, about here in the Bible, towards the end. It tells the story of the nativity, and then it tells the story of the wise men. But sometimes Bibles use big words and can be confusing. So I found this book to help us understand the story a little better. Look at the picture so you can see the kind of place they were walking through. It shows a lot of sand and not a lot of towns. They came from a land in the east. They traveled over hills afar. Three wise men saw a bright new star. The wise men knew that the star foretold the birth of a king for it was written of old. And so they journeyed night after night, following that star that shone so bright. Well, of course, when they got there, they went to the king. At last they arrived in Jerusalem town, where King Herod sat on the throne in his crown. They asked him, Have you seen the new Jewish king? We followed the star in search of him. Herod was angry. He was no fool. He knew that a new king would threaten his rule. 
So he said to them, When you find the king of the Jews, return by my palace to pass on the news. But he didn't want to go see the king. He wanted to hurt this new baby king. But they did not know that. So bearing their rich gifts, we'll talk about their gifts later, they went on to find the little Lord Jesus, so gentle and kind. Kneeling before him, they started to sing, With these precious gifts, we praise the new king. And if you look at their gifts, they're not wrapped in paper or in bags like we do gifts now. They're wrapped in some fancy containers. Looks like there might have been jewels on them because they knew they were bringing gifts to a king. But that silent night, as the wise men dreamed, God told them that Herod was not what he seemed. King Herod is filled with jealousy, and he means to have Jesus killed heartlessly. So listen well to this warning I say, and journey home by another way. Then an angel, I told you there were angels everywhere in this story, an angel appeared to Joseph one night to tell him his family should also take flight. Hark, sang the angel, pack up and flee to the land of Egypt till God calls on thee. So Jesus was safe to teach of God's glory, and that is the end of the first Christmas story. Well, just like maybe when your families go visit a new family or you go to a party, you bring a gift. Well, these wise men, and even though we always say three wise men, the Bible just says wise men. We think there were three because there were three gifts. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Not the kind of gifts you usually bring to a party, but gold, because gold symbolizes a king, and they knew they were coming to the birth of a king. Frankincense means represented deity or God, and so they brought the gift because they knew this baby was the son of God. And last was myrrh. Myrrh was something they would use to anoint someone who had died. Kind of letting people know that one day Jesus would die. I don't know if they understood that he would die on a cross for our sins, but it kind of reminded his parents that one day, unfortunately, he would die. And that was the three gifts they brought. And that is the end of the story of Christmas. Now we've done it all from the birth of from when the angel came to Mary, we did all that straight through to the coming of the king, to the three wise men to the king. And if you noticed, baby Jesus wasn't in the stable anymore because it took a while for them to get to baby Jesus. So Mary and Joseph had probably moved to a house by then, and they came and worshipped him in their house. And until next week, let's take a minute and thank God for his word. And we pray together, and then I hope we'll meet you back again virtually next week. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the Bible. We thank you for the wonderful stories that you have left us with that we can read and reread and learn about you. Thank you for technology that we can meet together even when we're staying home safe in our homes. Thank you for all that you do for us and how you care and protect us. In Jesus' name, amen. And see you again next week. Bye.